uh, the uh, when I think the, uh, the there will be a system that protect the content from uh, hackers and and uh, you know when uh, we solve the licensing <laughs> problems and the hacking problem to the content when the available bandwidth between the uh, countries and uh, the uh, continents is huge enough maybe we can think about cloud cloud for sure this is a future that maybe in 10 15 years will be for the uh, the content the video but I don't see it at the moment uh, maybe private clouds for uh, you know uh, through countries or through even organization could be a uh, an idea mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the cloud's a fantastic proposition. Um, uh, for what? Uh, I think for, for, for pretty much everything. I think the, the, one of the major worries of people, certainly for NBC, would be security of content on it. Um, obviously, I, I agree that I don't think the bandwidth's there yet. But um, I think we'd also, quite a lot of us would probably be out of jobs as well when, when you move this as actual services. But I think for reducing costs, for um, adding resilience to systems and, and protecting stuff, I I think the cloud is a fantastic problem. Do you see it having a, a, an internal? It's not just for the users. Well, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd see it more as being able to, um, you know, globally diversify where your where your sites are and and actually uh, use it as part of a disaster recovery and a lower cost of rollout of services as well. Okay. But as I said, security of content is the the thing that I think people are most paranoid about. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, similar to Nick, I think you know, content would be one, uh, security would be one aspect, but. Um, from a DR perspective, I think that's where mm. essentially as, a, as an archive, uh, to be able to duplicate our archive um, in the cloud in a, in a data warehouse. Uh, something you, you had yeah. yeah, issued in you. It's been the forefront of our minds yeah. for the last few years. So. <laughs> Glad we could help. Uh, and is, is that something that you're looking at, at, at doing to, to, to solve yeah, the DR? I mean, the whole DR project is a big project for us. So mm. we're in a uh, process of um, reviewing the whole business continuity um, piece at the moment and now for that will come with the art strategy okay. which, will, which will start early next year. And Hassan Cloud maybe a service? That, that yeah I think uh, um, it's part of outsourcing uh, uh, the operation and also as a for that recovery and I think that it's a collaboration it can offer collaboration uh, workflows if uh, for news for example uh, if, uh, if there is enough bandwidth, you can have your content there in a repository somewhere and access it from Google editing. Uh, but uh, so actually, the concept is not new. It's just when we had 10 years back the concept of ASCS application service providers, for example, which is more or less the same principle. Now, with higher bandwidth, you know, more applications can be done over there. Yeah. Okay. Dominic? I think uh, the term cloud is going the same way as the term media asset management. Media asset management. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, I can talk about asset management for three hours. Well. <laughs> and, uh, I think it's not the future. No, the cloud is not the future of television. The cloud is what we should be thinking about now, what we should be doing now. And the cloud can go from private, as you were alluding to, to public. Cloud person between the two. Security is not a concern. It's something that people use as an excuse not to go there in my mind. Um, it can be get, we can get around it. People are already using the cloud in IT, not worried about security. It's an education process. It's so, how you use it. Sorry? It depends how you use it. Again, the cloud, the the cloud means different things to different people. Absolutely. Um, it's just virtualization and efficient use of resources um, and changing it into an OPEX rather than a CAPEX, which I think everyone who works for broadcaster here faces the issue of not spending millions, if not I didn't get to um, that. The cloud is going to be the solution to that, and he's already been the solution to that in, in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Vendors are not delivering quickly enough on this because they can't make enough money on it, I think, in my view. Um, they realise that their niche market of selling ridiculously expensive boxes um, is disappearing. Um, <laughs> The number of redundant servers, the number of redundant databases, etc., etc., that we're building into our system is ridiculous. Where we can virtualize, we virtualize it. Broadcast doesn't get virtualization, and the vendors in the room step up. Maybe they, maybe they just need to sell them to different people. Uh, they sell them to the providers of cloud servers rather than. 
So, Dr. Reid. Well, uh, maybe I don't have a lot to say to add for, with my colleagues, but cloud is a, is a concept that is important, so to speak, from IT. And we try to apply it to the broadcast world. Okay, maybe it will be useful in some applications, but uh, is prime pre 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 content going to be on the cloud someday? I don't know. I think uh, it is good for uh, disaster recovery. It is good to have uh, you know um, you know uh, ease of work uh, for the broadcasters. Uh, uh, but the, the type of, of content that we're talking about to be on the cloud, maybe I'm, I'm not sure if it is the best content that's going to be on the cloud uh, soon, or or whether the broadcaster will be confident enough to keep it on that. It's, it's a question that remains uh, maybe unanswered for many Okay, so we'll, we'll be looking at that again uh, later on today. So um, we've got a few minutes left. Um, I'd like to open it up for some, some questions. Yeah. My question is related to Dr. Yal, and this is regarding about the standards in general. Does, as a regional organization, and of states broadcasting union. They have, uh, I mean, they set up, they put enough weight on the standardization of broadcast systems. They put enough weight for the standardization of the broadcast systems. Or they have an authority or a division that deals with the standard, uh, standardization of broadcast system. For example, you are talking about migrating to HD. Now, there are so many processes as uh, standards here. HD standard that already every organization is implementing. For example, I think Dubai they use 720p, if I'm not wrong. Dubai TV. Yeah. 10. We have 1080. 1080. 1080p. 1080i. 1080i. 1080p. P. 1080p. 2.55. Future. Mm. <laughs> and Al Jazeera Sports, they are doing 3G. Already they're doing 3G. Good luck. Their standard. This, of course, can will affect much because we are in a standardization school, you can say, in this region. So do you think that there is a need within the uh, ASPO to set an authority for standardization for the whole region? And what, what is the challenge you are facing in implementing such, such, such a system of placement authority? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, First, we have to admit that we don't live in a perfect world. And although maybe this, uh, this issue of centralization is uh, very clear or very uh, pro prominent, very clear to us in, in our region, it is not perfect in other parts of the world. I know what is happening, in, for example, in Europe. Not all European broadcasters adopted the same HD standard. And that can, even in, the, in, the, in North America, is the same. It's, uh, there is no one part of the world that is adopting a unified standard in that region. Simply because it is not always, at the end of the day, it's not only a technical issue. It's a, it's a political issue, it's a, a, a you know, financial issue, it's many other issues that is taken and the decision maker of the broadcast he, he has to take. It, as we know, uh, broadcasting unions in the world don't have, you know, uh, like a, a police authority. They can't force the broadcaster to take one system or the other. They can recommend, they can persuade, they can tell what is best for, for the broadcaster. But at the end of the day, the broadcaster, unfortunately, he takes the decision, good or bad, for his own organization. Uh, we know, for example, in, in, in Europe, 720p is, is the recommendation of the EBU. But look at uh, how many uh, broadcasters in Europe who don't obey uh, the 720p. We take other, other standards. So, unfortunately, our world is not perfect. And it's not ideal. We, we try and uh, do uh, what we can, but they, uh, the broadcasters don't listen. It's, you know, it's unfortunate. Our, also, unfortunately, some of the broadcasters in our region, they are not members of ASCO. They are private broadcasters. And uh, always we invite them that they are, they are more than welcome to be part and be a member of, 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 of ASPU and also of the, uh, of the HD group. But uh, it's just taking time. Let's I mean, throw that out. And I don't know which broadcasters are members or not, but, but to some of the broadcasters, 
you know, what's to stop you getting together and, you know, if, if, if OSN, NBC, Dubai and a few others got together and said, look, I don't care what anybody else thinks, we think these are the standards, everybody would have to listen, wouldn't they? I, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, but it's uh, it's something that um, the, the BBC did in in the UK, the, the, defining file standards. And I know I had one slight conversation with Hassan about uh, about uh, looking at doing that. I think it's a very very good idea. I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We, 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 of course, we talk unofficially, but on subjects of support, on subjects of getting the best out of uh, technology, we should be communicating yeah. officially. Because I'm disaster coverage as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, 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 there's things that we do better out here than I think we do in Europe, and one of them is cooperating. Um, and again, with disaster recovery and stuff like that, that really uh, showed, I think. Yeah. But we have to get our CFOs to meet together and our general managers meet together. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of reality. We're going to go to reality, no? <laughs> I, I think we ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> you forget that. That's, that's 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 just to add that to Dr. Riyad, what he said. That. And this does not apply to HD standards, also, but for all the broadcast standards, also. for audio, for video, for I mean, uh, contribution, distribution, and so on. But the other thing is that how this effect in the, in the providing of the bandwidth, because each one it goes with its, its bandwidth. I mean, uh, 3G, you need more bandwidth than the 720p. How it affects that in the I think the, our, our colleagues in Arab Sat or Yahsat are happy with that because they need more bandwidth. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. You want to sell more, more money. Yes. Yeah, for all the satellite operators uh, would prefer that everybody goes to 3G. <laughs> <laughs> Although, even though if they don't use it, they just uh, because this consumes more bandwidth. Now, I have seen, and uh, we have seen maybe 3G signals being broadcast with the clever uh, techniques on the same bandwidth. So eventually, the technology is, uh, you know, engineers and uh, scientists are clever enough to make us view and see, you know, the higher quality signal on basically the same bandwidth. If we remember 10 years ago, uh, we could only fit uh, 10 programs, 10 TV programs on a 36 megahertz transponder with standard definition. Now we can uh, fit up to six HD channels on the same bandwidth. And we know that the HD signal is, uh, is three or four times uh, uh, bigger in, ba in bandwidth. So I think engineers are uh, you know, always innovative to make us uh, live with uh, the same resources, getting higher qualities and more varieties. Sorry, can, can we? I just like because we've got yes, that. Yes, okay. well, to, to, to establish a specialist group to study these standards <laughs> and adopt them or develop them, adopt them. Uh, you know, just very simply, I would like to invite you to come to the ASBU uh, meetings. There is a technical committee <laughs> meeting, and the technical committee has four subgroups that deals with satellite, with production, with uh, uh, transmission, and uh, with training. You have the, the largest ever ASBU meeting in your next, next one. There's a okay, question. Okay. Yes. The uh, oh, Chris, sorry. I think we should take 10 more minutes. There are so many people who want okay, to ask fine, questions. Great. Okay, fine. Great. Okay, good. There's a gentleman there. Okay, fine. And we've got one uh, gentleman down in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, my question is uh, our, about the challenges of uh, uh, especially private uh, challenge. We have many, many challenges. First of all, transient from uh, SD to HD and from HD to 3D and uh, whatever. Uh, now we are here, uh, majority of the people of leader of this uh, industry. Uh, I need to ask is questions. We have many private channels and we have big challenges about the cost. The cost from... Uh, a change from uh, uh, CD to HD and whatever, and also for content. Content to have a challenge of, of that. If I need to take my decision to change, not easy to take this decision. Because I, I bought a lot of money in the beginning, and if we need to change from transit to other, 
well, big challenge. If we need to take advice from the leader, how we can.